Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Sorry it's been a while since I've uh, done a video and posted it, but life gets in the way and sometimes our priorities have to take on a different tack. Anyway, today we are going to put the spindle in the headstock. This should be pretty quick. It's a fairly easy process. A couple things you want to make sure that you do though. Number one, on your bull gear, make a witness mark with the keyway and do the same thing on the spindle. I've already done that. Here's the keyway. I've got a witness and mark out here on the outside so I can see that so they're lined up when we put them together. First thing we need to do, I've got everything right here ready to go. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the wicks inside where they go and we're going to pin them down. And I have a little wire here for holding them in place. Yep, I got that upside down, I think. Nope. Okay. Before you do this, you want to make sure everything's good and clean, all your channels are clean, so the oil flows freely. What this wire does, it holds that wick down below the level of the spindle, so when you're pushing the spindle in, it doesn't get caught up and get torn and put in the wrong, and get all bent up out of shape. It keeps it in place and intact. And here's that other wire. So we'll get this in there. I've soaked these in type A spindle oil, so they are ready to go. Come on, get in there. Get my screwdriver's getting in the way. Sometimes they cooperate, and sometimes they don't. There we go. Okay, next thing we need to do is to lube the inside of the cone pulley with some Teflon grease and there are some channels in there. Make sure you get those in there filled in pretty good and then just give it a light coat. Doesn't take a whole lot of this stuff. I don't think the camera would have picked up the channels that are cut in there, so that's why I didn't show them to you, but they are at an angle and helps speed the, the grease when you lube it through this port. Helps feed it, spread it out through the whole width of the cone pulley. Set that up right there. All right, now we're ready to start putting everything together. First thing is your spindle. Oh, 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 I did forget something. I did forget something. I got to put some type A spindle oil in here on the bearings. Oops. Kind of came out kind of fast. I guess I cut the hole in that tip too big. That just helps everything get going smoother and instead of running it and turning it dry. All right, here we go. Spindle in. First thing is the, the bull gear. And pretty much at the same time, the cone pulley. starting to go now. Oh, oh, oh. Forgot two things. Two of the most important things. One, the drive belt. Easy to forget this part. If you remember, I did it back there on the horizontal drive. And also now goes on the thrust bearing. It's a three-piece bearing. It goes in there. Okay, got all that good so far. There she goes. 
didn't have that keyway properly lined up. There it is. Just a little bit more. Check to make sure that's lined up. Those witness marks line up real good. Should go right in there. Now one thing the book did suggest doing is to utilize the tailstock. Got a block of aluminum here. I'm just going to put between the two of them and just slowly see if we can push that in there. Yep, there she goes. Smart tail stock moving on me. Tighten it down just a little bit more. Ah, too close. Oops, sorry about that. Didn't mean to hit the camera. There, now it's going in there. It's pushing it in and it's uh, moving my tail stock also. So, that's a tight fit. But that's what you want. Those of you that can see or, or know what's going on here, you can see I've got the shim nuts loose, so that's opened up a little bit. Turn that a little bit, see if that helps any. Now I'm going to wait on pulling those out just yet. Oh yeah, that one's somewhat. that tight of fit getting that in there. Well let's try let's try this. This is the two piece gasket. Has a little pin on it and the locking nut that has a hole in it where that pin engages. And this is what goes on the back side here and holds keeps this from flopping around too much. Let me just find that hole. There it is right there. there we go. I don't know how well you can see that, but well, let me move this block out of the way. I've just got to close that up about a quarter inch, three-eighths of an inch gap. But this, this collar would be resting against that. So, hmm. Well, that went in a little bit because that came loose. All right. Well, I finally got it. I guess I just didn't have my tail stock down tightened up enough. But she spins nice and freely. There's no movement left and right. So I think we can pull these wires now to engage those wicks into the bottom of the spindle bearings. The tail locking nut here, you tighten it down. And then you back it off about one twelfth or so of a turn until this spindle turns freely with no no drag and there's no left and right movement because that's really what this is this is holding your move your spindle from moving left and right. So we're good there. And that's all there is to the spindle assembly. 
disengage the bolt gear. That's when you're in backing gear because you're running these gears then. So that's a uh, everything's looking real good there. All right. Next up will be the the back gears, and then we'll adjust everything. We'll see you later. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day. Well, howdy, everybody. Welcome back to the shop. All right, I've got everything set up and ready to go for putting the back gears in. But before we get started down that, I want to talk to you about these tapered pins that we use on the back gears. There's one at each end. Taper pin. Let's see if I can give you a quick demonstration of it here. It's got a taper, and the holes are tapered, so it only goes one way. Flip it over, it won't even start. Now, along with that, the shaft also has a tapered hole going through it. So you want to make sure that you line up the big side of that hole with the big side of the eccentric so the taper goes in. So I've put a witness mark on the end of the shaft on the high side, and I've done it on both, both ends. That's the thicker part of the taper, the bigger part, so I know that which way to turn this when I put them in. So let's put this together. I'm not too experienced with taper pins. Um, in fact, I've never even come across them until this project, so let's see how it goes. I've already lubed up the inside of the gear shaft with the super Teflon grease. The inside there is my upside. That goes in there like so. There's a hole coming through. see now I've got this this one in I haven't put the pin down tight yet but it is in that was a little difficult so I did it off ended up doing it off camera just because I was struggling and uh, I was struggling I can't put it to you any simpler than that all right hopefully this back one will go in a lot easier get that lined up Real close right there. There it is. You know this hammer is a little big, but I cannot find my my little one anymore. I do not know what happened to it. I have misplaced. So many tools since I've been doing this remodel in here with the new cabinets in the tool room. But that's a whole other story. Anyway, there you go. There's the back gears. We'll, uh, next episode, we'll, we'll be adjusting these and adjusting the spindle. Alright, thanks for stopping by. Have a great day. Remember to click like and subscribe. Captain Jamie.